Let's turn our Bibles or however we have our scripture this evening to Deuteronomy 32, 9 to 14. We're continuing to talk on the subject, soaring on eagle's wings. That is our, the word of the Lord we're running with this year. Hallelujah. And the Spirit of God has really told us that January is a fat month. Say with me, January is a fat month. Dripping with fatness and oil and abundance in the name of Jesus Christ. Say in January, the Lord is starting with me fast, early, and large. You believe that? Praise the Lord. It will be to you according to your confession of faith. All right, we'll just do this from verse 9. We're sharing on soaring on eagle's wings, and we want to just examine a little bit as we make progress today what it means to soar on eagle's wings. Hallelujah. What it means to soar on eagle's wings. Give us a little bit of insight again, additional insight into the word of the Lord for this year. Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. And he led him about. We already started sharing on this on Sunday. Very critical keys. We are God's people. God looks at us and as far as he's concerned, we are his inheritance. Men have their inheritance in physical things, houses, cars, whatever it is. Um, but God, God, as far as he's concerned, his people are his inheritance. His people are his treasure. And he, walk, he, he watches his people very jealously. He guards his people very jealously. And uh, we want to reemphasize the point that you are not just an accident. Hallelujah. God cares about you. God loves you. And God is interested in every detail of your life. You, God is not dealing with you like somebody who is gambling or playing a game of Ludo. If you are familiar with that game, he's not throwing any dice over your life. Are you here somebody? When, he's, when he was thinking about you, he carefully thought out redemption and he exchanged Jesus for your life. So he's not looking at you and expecting for you to do anything but to walk in the fullness of all that he has provided for you. I want you to understand this evening that God's guiding hand is over you. God's hand of protection is over you. But it's important for us as children of God to know that we must, we must learn to walk with God and cooperate with him. He's, he's given us such an amazing gift that we are just like him. The gift of free moral choice. Human beings are free moral agents. So God is not going to force you to walk with him in as much as he loves you. But you're going to have to make that effort. But when you, when you reach out toward him, you, you discover that he has already reached out towards you. So this year, by God's grace, you're going to walk with God. We are all going to walk with God closer than we've ever walked with him before. And I love this because said he found him in a desert land, in a waste howling wilderness. To me, that means, listen, it doesn't matter. Wherever God meets you, he can take you into the place he has ordained for you. Your past, your circumstances, even the mistakes or the faults that you have, there's nothing around your life that can intimidate God if you decide to walk with him. From wherever you are, whatever is around your life, no matter how complicated or impossible it looks, no matter the mess, look at this. He found him in a desert land. These are God's covenant people. We identify with Jacob because we're God's covenant people. Galatians 3, 29 says, If you be Christ, then are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So if you're Christ, you identify, you find yourself here. He found him in a desert land. So wherever God has found us in 2024, you can, he's taking us somewhere. And there's a good place he's taking us. But look at this. He led him about. So that was the secret of these covenant people. They did, not, they did not live their own lives. They found God's plan and they walked with it. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Please continue. Thank you, Lord. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him. There was no strange God with him. So we're going, to, we're going to step into our inheritance. We're going to, listen, nothing around us can keep us from walking God's best. If we allow God to lead us and instruct us. Said the Lord alone did lead him. There was no strange God with him. Then look at the result of it. Look at the result of it. Yielding to the leading and the instruction of God. He made him to ride on the high places of the earth. That is your destination this year. And early you will find it in Jesus' name. You know what that means? The high place of the, uh, that means there is a place where nothing can stop you from walking in God's best. The high places of the earth, that is your inheritance. That he might eat the increase of the fields. That's abundance. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock. That means results come out of naturally, humanly impossible places. 
So when God is leading you and instructing you, there is no terrain that can conquer you. There is no terrain that's too difficult. When God is leading you, even the place they say is a wilderness will turn to you for a water, to a water garden. So you don't have any problems in 2024. You just yield to God. You just walk with him. You allow him to lead you and instruct you. Praise the name of the Lord. The terrain is not the issue. The place or the geographical location is not the issue. You just be where God wants you to be. And then look at this. He made him suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Butter of kind. He's just talking about abundance. Milk of sheep. Fat of lambs. Rams of, of breed of Bashan. Goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. In, in the Bible days, this was talking about exotic food. I mean, he's talking about abundance. Not just surplus, but high quality surplus. Because you, you know you can have a lot of rubbish, right? You don't want a lot of rubbish. You want a lot of the best. So that is where God is taking you. So this year, this is our anchor scripture. And we want to gain some insight into what it means to soar on eagle's wings. And we established this. Now look at this. When, when, when God was talking, he used this word eagle. Let's go to Isaiah 40, verse 31. He used the word eagle. He used the, not just the word, the, the, he used the description of that earth, bird, eagle. So there's something about that bird, eagle, that has to do with God, that represents God. Because he's not talking about that physical bird. Of course, God created nature. He created the animals. He created the birds. He created, I mean, the, the, the beast of the field, of the sea, of the air. But why is he using that word eagle? That word, that animal, that creature, eagle. So honestly, it's not a bad idea to study the eagle. We're not going into that now. We'll, we'll get into that as we go along. But it's not a bad idea to study the eagle because inside of that bird, eagle, you see a lot about God's character and nature. That's why he was identifying himself. He said he led them about, he instructed them. Then he said he bought them on eagle's wings. And that eagle is representative of God. So inside of that eagle, you see strength, you see character, you see majesty. So inside of that bird, you study the character of that bird. You find a lot about the nature of God. Even though God's nature is, is manifested in all of his creation. Hallelujah. I, I said hallelujah. Even though you know the fall of man brought a curse into the earth that distorted the nature of a lot of things. You see, because God did not originally create the lion to eat meat. If you look at it, the lion was actually created to eat the herbs of the field. But it's, 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 it's the curse that turned the lion into the carnivore. I don't know if, well, it must have been somehow. I don't know how mosquitoes came, but mosquitoes originally were not meant to be sucking our blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought there were no mosquitoes in America until I went there. Anyway, so they wait. Mosquitoes are everywhere. But they wait. <laughs> Oh God. So they almost don't speak for their small. I mean, speak. Anyway, they, you see, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Why does God focus on this bird, eagle? They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Now look at also Revelation chapter 3, chapter 4, verse 5. I want you to see around the throne of God, there are four cherubims. They're actually a, yeah, cherubims because they're seraphims that also manifest as cherubims. But cherubims are, are the highest class of angels, okay? And each of those were described. One of them, the Bible said, he the, has the likeness of a man. Look at it. And of the, uh, out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Verse 6. And behold, before the throne of God, there was a sea of crystal, a glass like unto crystal in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Verse 7. And the first beast was like a lion. The second beast was like a calf. The third beast had a face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. I hear somebody. So in all of those animals, God chose those, I mean, three animals. And then when you see, like, had the face of a man. So those cherubims that are directly around God right now, that's how, this is a description of God's throne right now. So those cherubims are there around them. And it, it's instructive because they're the ones that directly surround God. So they're the ones that manifest most or, or portray most the nature of God. So when you say a calf, which is like a bull, when you see a flying eagle. When you see one that had a face of a man, you know God looks exactly like us. God looks, he created us in his image. So God looks like man. Are you here somebody? So you see these, these, these creatures are, are they, 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 they bear most 
the character and nature of Almighty God. But my point is this. Why does God describe, why does God use the eagle? Because he's using that eagle to describe himself. So when we talk about soaring on the wings of eagles, we're actually talking about being born or carried by Almighty God himself in 2024. Of course, we're supposed to be living that way all of our lives. But there's something about this year, ladies and gentlemen, brethren in Christ, there's something about this year. From this year, you're going to see a marked division between the world and the church. It's called the Glorious Church. I'm telling you this. From this year, it's been happening in pockets. But this year, there's going to be a quantum leap. What I mean that this, this God's plan for this year is from this year, there's going to be a significant departure from the norm. It, it, God's idea is not just for pockets of believers to be shining. But he wants the church to be distinguished. And it's, it's an evangelistic tool. Now, it's going to be literally like this. That what happens to the world should not happen to the church. I'm telling you this. So expect this hand in your finances, in your health, in every... God wants, to dem God wants to distinguish us on the face of the earth. Now let's, let's look at Exodus 8. Now see, if you, don't, if you don't, you have to believe this thing. Then the Holy Spirit will start working with you and enlightening you and releasing grace into your life to manifest it because spiritual things or God's, in God's kingdom, things work by believing. Are you here somebody? Believing is the mechanism that causes it to work. And we believe as we hear God's word. So you see, Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God's simple system is very simple. As we hear his plan through his word, there's an injection of faith in our hearts. As we believe it and cooperate with it, we begin to rise to that level. Now let's look at this. Let's look at this in um, Exodus chapter 8. Exodus 8, 22. I want you to see this. It's God's plan. This was in the midst of that divine drama when God was using Moses to teach <laughs> Pharaoh and Egypt a lesson, you know, plague upon plague was coming upon Egypt to break Pharaoh's will so he could let Israel go. Now, we just pick this up from here. Let's go to 21. Maybe it will give you a bit more. Just 21. Just 21. Okay, thank you. Or else, if you will not let my people go, Behold, I will send, this is Moses delivering message to Pharaoh. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon you and upon your servants and upon your people and into your houses and the, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground whereon they are. That's the extent that God is going to go for you. You have to believe that too. Are you here, somebody? God will go to any extent. You stand on this blood covenant, God will go to any extent to enforce that covenant in your life. Now look at this. This is where I'm going. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen. Now let me tell you what this word, keep it there. Let me tell you what this word sever means. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I like it. I will sever in that day the land of Goshen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Give me a moment here. Glory to God. Yes, there is this. The word sever in the Hebrew means to distinguish. So you can literally say this way. I will distinguish in that day the land of Goshen. That's where Israel was in Egypt. It means to put a difference, to set apart, to separate, to, to mark out or to cause to be distinct. To mark out. So that's what I'm saying that this soaring on eagle's wings revelation, this year, this God's plan is a marked difference between you and the world. Are you here, somebody? And it's an evangelistic tool to the extent that people, he wants people to quickly come to this and say, hey, why is it that there's a difference between that one and me? I will savor in that day. I'll, I'll, I'll put a mark that will distinguish them. In that day, the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. In Goshen, Goshen, none of the plagues, none of those diseases, none of the plagues crossed over into the land of Goshen. That no swarms of flies shall be there to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. You see, that's why. I said, that's why. So that the world will know that he is God and he's working for his people. So, We've come into the era of um, Isaiah 8, 18. I and the children of the Lord have given me there for signs and wonders. So the church has come into the era of signs. That's the truth. 
We, have, we are in the era of signs. I want you to know that. God wants to distinguish you by signs. So you're going to walk with God. See, God is going to put people on bended knee to bow their knee for your sake. He's going to crush opposition for your sake. You see, but you have got to be aligned with him in covenant. You can't just be living and doing your own thing. Truly speaking, God is not going to back you up if you do your own thing. That's the truth. Can't lie to you about that. You must align with him. So I will serve her in that day, the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies. Swarm. That's why we fast and pray. So it's, not, it's not to get God to do anything for us. It's mainly for us to get sensitive so we can really align with his plan. You don't want to be involved in anything in 2024 that God is not involved in. No, you don't want that. You don't want that baggage. No matter how... See, it's only a sensitive heart that will be able to tell the difference between an open door and a trap. They all look the same. Without discernment. So you see, that's what this fasting and prayer does. It's not getting God. God has given us all things in Christ. There's no problem from God's end. This bad matter is a matter of alignment. And some people say, why does it take so long? Because some people are too dense spiritually. Too, truly. Too much spiritual density. So we need to shake off that thing and get sensitive in the Holy Ghost. So you have to start going after not just what you like. Yes, after what you, yes, go after what you like, but come to a place where what you like is actually what God likes. Uh -huh, that's life. You get to a place where you kill the flesh in the place of prayer and fasting so that God's purposes will rise in your heart. See, God's plan is already blessed, my brother and sister. You don't have to, he's already blessed. You see, the lines, are, they fall upon us in pleasant place. That's the error we're in. Things are to fall on us now in this place. I was in that day, the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end. That's the reason. That's the ultimate reason to attract this world to Jesus Christ. To the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Look at this. Let's go on 23. 23. And I will look at the first thing in verse 22. These are scriptures you want to study. And I will see that. Believe it. Put a mark that will distinguish you. And then 23. I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. You know what division is? It's a wall. An invisible wall. A barrier. So that some things can't cross over into your space. I'm telling you. That is, that is soaring. This soaring on eagles is, is your, your coming where God, God has put us in a place where we are markedly distinguished from the world. Some things can't cross over into your zone. I tell you the truth, there's a poverty free zone. No? I did not say everybody will be a billionaire. You can if you want to and you walk with God and you sow and you understand the principles. Are you here somebody? But for all of God's people, there is a place where lack can't come near you again. I tell you the truth. There is a place where sickness can't come near you again. There is a place where no satanic arrow, and there are satanic arrows. Oh. There is a place where no satanic hex, where no, no magician's incantation can even cross over into that zone. There is a no-fly zone over your life for wickedness. He said, I will put a division between my people and your people. And tomorrow this sign shall be. Now look at this division. Division here in the Hebrew means also distinction. Hallelujah. It means something that has a distinction that has been brought about as a result of a ransom. A distinction, a division, a marked separation between two categories of people that have been brought about as a result of a ransom. So, a ransom is sacrifice. So, if that sacrifice has not been given and received by a certain category of people, they cannot enjoy this. So, Egypt was plagued because they didn't have a ransom. Egypt, Israel was spared in Goshen because they had a ransom. God had entered covenant with Abraham and used it as a, as a type of Christ. So, God was dealing with Abraham and in his mind, he was dealing with Christ. Are you a somebody? So, that distinction comes as a result of a ransom. So, you see, as we break bread, you must know that a ransom was given for you. He, Satan cannot kill you. He has no right to. He can't stop you from making progress. You must, you must engage this thing. You must believe it. You must be fanatical about your belief in this area. If there's any place to be fanatical, this is it. I will put a division between my people and your people. Sir, Ma, we are in the era of signs, period. From 2024, as we enter this year, that's God's way. You see, you see how you see that eagle flying up there? Eagles actually don't fly. Oh. 
They don't fly. They soar. They, they, they engage wing currents. The only time you see them using their wings is when they want to come down to get their prey or when they want to get up into soaring mode. Are you here, somebody? So, let's look at this. That eagle is God. And what does it mean to soar? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. So, when we're talking about soaring on eagle's wings, we're, we're talking about, it's, it's, like, it's like God is giving you a ride. <laughs> the God of the, you're, you're, sit, the God of, you're sitting on the God of the entire universe. And he's, he, he's the one that's giving you a ride. Are you here, somebody? He's giving you a ride in your finances, giving you a ride in your health. Giving your, your academics, your profession, your career, your affairs. Your life is literally being sponsored by the God of heaven. He is that eagle. Are you here somebody? We talk about soaring. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you Lord. It means to hover in the air at a great height. I like this one. It means to fly without engine power or loss of altitude. You know, these mighty aircraft jets, when they're gliding in the air, when they're, when, they're, when they're flying in the air, if you're in a jet and it's at cruising altitude, you look outside the window, it's almost like the jet is not moving. But how you know how fast the jet is going is when it's about to land. Then you know that the engines have actually been sustaining it. But look at this now. When... When that jet is flying in the air at that altitude and the engines are working properly, it is almost like effortless. Are you here, somebody? So to soar means to fly at a place where you never lose altitude. Oh, I love it. Okay, hallelujah. You see, when God, as God is lifting you up from level to level, you don't go back to the place you left yesterday. The path of a just man is a shining light. It shines what? More and more to the perfect day. Just like it's the engines that power the aircraft. What is the engine that powers our life? It's the sacrifice of Christ. Yes, you can say God, but what it is practically in God is the sacrifice of Christ. Our faith in it. That's, what, that's the engine that powers our life. Are you here somebody? It means to rise or increase dramatically in position. It means to ascend to a high or an exalted level. Glory to God forevermore. So I like to describe soaring as assisted flight. See, when the eagle is up in the, eye, in the sky, it is using its wings to navigate the wind currents. So it's, it's almost, it is almost resting. It's, its composition is built. It can stay up there for hours. But if you see smaller birds like pigeons or doves or sparrows, they just do short sprints. You just say, I'm flying, go there. You just do one kind of joke like this. Just be doing shakara. It's not built to ride wind currents, but the eagle is. Sir, no short lived prosperity for you, no short lived health for you. Everything in your life is long span. Why? Because you're powered by God. That ego, God, and the sacrifice of Christ is an inexhaustible sacrifice. Are you here, somebody? So everything in your life has, should have longevity. Oh, hallelujah. No, no short-term success for you. No. You're powered by something else. Are you here, somebody? So that soaring is restful, assisted flight. Something is working. The sacrifice is working. You're believing, you're cooperating, you're being led by the Spirit. You're being instructed. You're, you're yielding to the wisdom of God. So the energy in Christ's sacrifice, the wisdom of God, who, who is Christ, the power of God, is assisting you in this flight. Are you here, somebody? I love how Bishop Oedipo always says it. Jesus is the son of righteousness. Are you here somebody? He's the one that's ex ex he's the one that is ex ex exhuming or releasing the heat. We are reflecting the ref we are simply reflecting what he has done. Jesus is that sun. We are like the moon. Are you here somebody? The moon reflects the light of the sun. It does not generate the heat of the sun. That's the that's the beauty of being part of the body of Christ. Jesus has generated the heat for us. He died. Nobody can do what he did. So that he said, receive what I've done as a sacrifice. Receive it as a gift. Receive what I've done in my sacrifice as a gift. And then learn of my ways. Are you here somebody? And then rest. You see, when that eagle is flying, it is those, the strength of the eagle is actually those wind currents. And his ability to navigate them. So he can stay there for hours. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Because he's built that way. So God is telling you that you are built to run and not grow weary. You are built to walk and not faint. You are built for longevity. You are built for constant progress in results. That is how you are built. You're not just built for, for one result one day and then it, you go back 10 steps, one step, go back to No, you are built for the long haul. You are built for consistent progress. It's in your DNA spiritually. You're built to defy the forces of this world. Are you here, somebody? Glory to God forevermore. So what is soaring on eagle's wings? Quickly, it is. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It is, number one, to be untouched, unscathed, untouched, far removed from the effect of the curse and the economies and corruption of this world system. It's part of our com confession. To be untouched, far removed from the effect of the curse and the economies and the corruption of this world system. John 17, 11. John 17, 11. The Lord Jesus, in his intercession for the, for the church, he said, he was talking to the Heavenly Father God. He said, keep them in this world just like you kept me. He said, I'm not asking that you remove them from this world, but keep them from the wickedness in this world. He said, I'm in the world. I am not of the world. They also are in the world. They are not of the world. But now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep them through thy own name, th those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Okay, just give me 11. Give me 14 now. Verse 14. I have given them thy word and the world... Hate has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now look at verse 16, please. Thank you, Lord. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He emphasized it. Now look at verse 17. Sanctify them, separate them by thy what? Truth. Thy word is truth. So you see, the word of God, your, your, your belief in that word, allowing you to regulate your life and to determine how your life is, you know, allowing it to become your belief system, it will bring you to this place where you are separated from the world. So you can see how what God told us, how it's going to play out in our New Testament dispensation is the word of God is at the center of this thing. It is what will separate you. What you do with God's word, you're believing it, you're allowing it to determine your value system. Are you here, somebody? You see, this is what will separate you from thy truth, uh, through thy truth. Separate them, that's what sanctify means. Separate them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Praise God. Now look at 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Peter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter 1. Number one, it means to be soaring above eagle's wings, means to be untouched, removed, far removed from the effects of the curse and the economies and corruption of this world system. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. According as God's divine power has given unto us, how many things? All things that pertain unto life and godliness, that have to do with life and godliness, through the knowledge of him, that's the word of God there now, that has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. You see, this is all God's word is talking about. That by these words, by these words, we might what? Be partakers. To partake means that you enjoy it. You share in it. You have a share in it. Partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Look at the word escape. Escape means having you flee from it. It means it has no effect over you again. You can use the word exempt, exempted. Or to have an exemption. Praise the Lord. See, when you have an exemption, you're not treated like other people. Hello? I said, hello? You have a diplomatic passport. When you go to any airport in the world, you're not treated like other people. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. When you go to the U.S., you see U.S. citizens here, others, other nationalities here. You see them fast-tracking U.S. citizens. So at least I was a bit happy when we came home. Praise the Lord. They say, Nigerians, Nigerian passports here. Others oh, there. So you must say, eh? <laughs> but if you have diplomatic passport, anywhere you go, they fast track you. It's just an example. I'm trying. You can use any other example. The issue is exemption, mean, meaning that what touches others does not touch you. Yes, say I'm exempted. I'm exempted. You know the good thing about this thing, it works for those who believe. 
you believe you receive you doubt you go without you you you, you no you can't bribe your way for this just receive it believe it he said pastor can i cannot believe it have you, did you how did you believe to receive jesus as your lord and savior that's how you believe these things you find the word of god for it that's why we're showing the word are you here somebody our prayer today is mainly going to be for ourselves then we're going to just take communion amen Tomorrow we'll resume praying for our country. But today we're doing selfish prayer. Because we don't have time. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these things you might be partakers of the divine nature. Kai, I pray you settle with these scriptures all. Having escaped, is that means that the moment you enter Christ, you have escaped already. What you need to do now is to work out, you need to just work this thing out by your faith. As far as God's concerned, you have escaped. So don't settle for anything less. Have you escaped the corruption that's in the world through us? What is corruption? Decay. When Adam sinned, this whole world lies in darkness. 1 John 5, 19. Is going, listen, anything left to itself in this world will go to the devil. Decay. That's why we have to preserve food. We have to do this. God, God didn't create all this food, food to, be, to be preserved. Is the curse in the world. Germs, bacteria, disease is from sin. That's why the anointing can kill it. When you stand on who you are in Christ, the anointing can kill it. These are effects of the curse. Are you here somebody? But Galatians 3, 13, 14 says, Christ has redeemed us, redeemed us, ransomed us from the curse of the law, having been made what a curse for us. Are you here somebody? For it is written, curses everyone that hangeth upon a tree, that we might what? Receive the blessings of, of Abraham, the promise of the Spirit through faith. But you know what? He has not only redeemed us from the curse of the law, he has redeemed us from the curse of the fall. Galatians 3, 16 to, I see when he began to, he didn't curse Adam and Eve, he just told them, because you have done this, this is the effect. He was just declaring the effect. He didn't curse, God has no curse to give. He was just telling them, this is the effect of what's going to happen to you. Are you here somebody? The woman in travail in pain, the man with toiling and sweating. But you know, when Christ died, I hear somebody. We've taught that severally, severally, that he shed his blood in seven places. And some of those places he shed in blood, his blood dealt with the curse of toiling to eat. Not working or laboring, but toiling and struggling. You are not to toil and struggle to eat, you are to work. There's a difference. Without anxiety in your heart, you're to work. When you work, you don't, you don't think your work is your supply. God is your supply. It's not your work. But you're just working because you're engaging the covenant. Are you here, somebody? But your supply comes from heaven. I say it comes from heaven. I was talking with some brethren the other day, and they were sharing with me how that the wife, the, 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 the guy had not necessarily been in a job. He's into business, all of that. But you know, you, you know how business can be sometimes. And the wife had you know, had been employed, but what had not been paid salary for almost a year. So I told them, how are you living? They said, it was in that time that they sent their children to school. It was in that time that they did massive projects. I said, now, do you know the, the, the benefit now that you have gotten? And then they now, you know, finalized some things about her job and then they paid her, her salary backlog. But I said, you see, the, the testimony now is not that they paid your salary back. The testimony is that you now know that your salary is not your source. Before, if you hear pastor saying, you say it's because it's pastor. But now, you now, she say, yes, sir. Now I know my salary is not my source. So why do we work? To engage the covenant. That's all. We just work to engage covenant and bless humanity with goods and services. I hear somebody. But truly, our income is not our source. No. That's why out of whatever comes into our life, we sow and then we tithe. We connect to God's supernatural economy. Then we release our faith. Are you here somebody? We listen to God. We listen to the wisdom of God. We get direction from heaven and then we speak and we speak and we speak because we're the prophets of our own lives. In the realm of the spirit, it is speaking that is eating. It's speaking that's progressing. If you're walking and you're, what you're saying is against what you're doing, you can't prosper no matter how skillful you are. Because the Bible did not say it's the work of your hands that will feed you. The Bible said it's your mouth. A man's mouth will satisfy his belly. Are you here somebody? I Say I've escaped. Say I've escaped. Say the curse of the law and of the fall of man have no power over me. 
just like the fire had no power over Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The world's economies have no power over me. That's the truth. Are you here, somebody? So quickly, number one, to be, it means to be untouched, far removed from the effect of the curse and economies and corruption of this world system. Number two, it means, well, I've already mentioned it, we are in the world and we are not of the world. Number three, we have escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Hallelujah. Number four, we have been redeemed from the curse of the law and of the fall. If you get these scriptures, John 17, 11 to 17, 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4, Galatians 3, 13 and 14, you've gotten it. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to be preaching over and over. Amen. So here in Nimbokru campus, if you come to church, you'll get it. If you don't come to church, sorry. All right. So, five. God distinguishes us from the world by putting a division between us and the world. So I've actually basically mentioned it from, that is Exodus 8, 22 and 23. The rest of them are Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Um, if, if, if you study, you'll find it. Genesis 3, 16 to 19. That's the curse of the, you find that's the curse of the law. Very important. We have been delivered from both the curse of the law and from the curse of the fall. Now let me tell you this. Proverbs 11, verse 9. The righteous, by knowledge, is the righteous delivered. By knowledge, is the righteous delivered. If you don't know it, you can't believe it. And if you don't believe it, it won't work for you. But before believing comes knowing. That's why Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He said, because you reject knowledge, I reject you as priests. See, we are kings and priests in the New Testament. But the the functioning tool of a priest is knowledge. Knowledge, not information, but knowledge. It must start with information. Then it must must graduate to knowledge. Knowledge means now you you have taken it for yourself. You are applying it in your life and you are enforcing it. Let me tell you this. Satan will never give up except you resist him. James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit yourself unto God. You submit yourself unto God by, how, how are you going to submit yourself unto God without knowing what his word says? So, you find what his word says concerning any area, you submit yourself to it. Finances, submit yourself to tithing and giving. Are you somebody? For supernatural prosperity, supernatural prosperity doesn't come by work. Work is part of the plan. It's the natural part of prosperity. But supernatural prosperity comes by covenant practice, tithing and giving and sacrifice. I hear somebody. Then the anointing of gospel comes upon the work of your hands. Then your results will deliver more than the normal work you do. Oh, hallelujah. Believers must understand this. We are not, we are not just to live naturally. Our, our life is to have a supernatural boost. Working is part of God's covenant, but it is the natural part of it. Are you here, somebody? You need to have God's hand on your hand. Life is spiritual, my friends. Life is spiritual. It's control from that realm. The spirituality of the believer is the sacrifice of Christ. When we live, when we believe that sacrifice, we are put above the highest realms of this world. Then we can start operating from that place. Then everything else we do has that divine influence. But believing is critical. And you can't believe until you have the scripture. That's why we must stay with the scriptures though, until we absorb it. It becomes our belief system. We believe it more than we believe anything else. This thing doesn't come by accident. It doesn't. If you don't stay with it, it won't become a part of you. Or stay with it. By knowledge shall the just, the righteous, be delivered. So you know what you know, then you stand on it. Submit yourself unto God, James 4, 7. Then resist the devil. Resist means, resist means take up a firm stance against him. And then he will flee. He will come for everything that's precious to you. He will come for your health. He will come for your, for your family. Anything that gives you joy and peace, Satan will come for it. But he has no right. You must stand your ground and show him that you know. That he knows. That both of you know. That he has no right here. He came for Jesus three times at temptation. And Jesus resisted him. And the Bible said he left for a season. The son of God. So, you go. He will rest and come back again. You say, hey, Satan, Satan, Satan. Oh, you want to, you want to go to heaven early? That's the only time you rest from him. So, build your faith and gain dominion. Let him know that anytime he comes, he will have two black eyes and crack ribs, so to speak. Then he will stay away from you. He's always looking for an opportune time. That's why the Bible said concerning Jesus, look for he went, he left Jesus for a season. One translation said he looked for an opportune time. 
So in the realm of the spirit, you must be on your guard. Are you here, somebody? Glory to God. Are you here, somebody? Now, we'll just mention this. This is what it means to soar like an eagle. We are untouched, unscathed, far removed from the effect of the curse and the economies and corruption of this world system. We are in the world. We are not of the world. We have escaped the corruption that is the world through lust. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law and the curse of the fall. And God distinguishes us, oh, I love it, from the world by putting a division between us and the world. I absolutely believe, not cock you arrogantly, I absolutely believe that there is a wall of division between me and the world. I can't believe it for you. But when you get the scripture and you believe it for yourself, it will work for you. I tell you, it will work for you. I say it will work for you. Because in this covenant, is equal opportunity. Are you here, somebody? God's no respecter of persons. But you see, you must engage it. That you must engage it. Engage it means that you must activate it. Just like if you put a sweetener inside your beverage, you know, coffee, tea, however you like it. You put a sweetener, whatever your choice of sweetener is. If you don't stir it, it won't sweeten. So that's how this covenant is. It's yours, but you must stir it. Are you here, somebody? You must stir it up. So I just mentioned three things. We don't have time, so we'll just pray for 15 minutes and then we break bread. Because tonight is not how long, amen? It's how potent. Are you here, somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? Something is coming on you tonight. Something is coming on you tonight. Something is coming on you tonight. Listen to me. I know that all of us are different levels of spiritual development and growth. But God is going to, God's going to do something to fast track us tonight. Let me tell you the things that are critical to spiritual development. Your seeing and your hearing. Critical. But you read the scripture, you don't understand it. It's not your portion because unto you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without has not been given. Mark, Mark chapter 4 verse 11. So you must believe. Say, don't ever say, I, I did the Bible, I don't understand. No, I, I, I hear, I read, I hear, and I understand the Bible. Because I'm, I'm in Christ if I'm born again. And unto me it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. I hear somebody. I've been initiated in Christ. Glory to God. Proverbs 22 have said, the seeing eye and the hearing ear, the Lord giveth them both. Uh, your, uh, your eyes will see this year. Oh. Kai, erebo samaya. No fruitless labor this year. No investing your time and energy in funds on things that will be a dead end this year. No, 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 no. No fruitless labor. No productive labor. I don't care how good it looks. God gives you eyes to see the difference between an open door and a trap. You only touch things that will be, pro that will pro be productive for you this year. Are you here, somebody? And every backlog that is yours, that is due you, you are entering that harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Because your eyes are open to see, your ears are open to hear. See, you must say this about yourself. You must, you must declare it. If you're, not used, if you're not used to talking like this, it may look strange to you. But it doesn't matter. Just because it's strange to you does not mean it's not real. It doesn't mean it's yours. It's not yours. So you must say, my eyes are open to see, my ears are open to hear. I see and I hear and I understand concerning my inheritance. Are you here somebody? My feet are set upon the path that I should go. The Lord has enlarged my feet under me. None of my steps shall slide. You, you, you talk this way. Are you here somebody? This is exemption talk. Are you here somebody? It's your inheritance. Don't leave it there. Don't leave it lying low. Me, I know there's none of you here today. No matter how humble your face looks. If they tell you that you have an inheritance of one million dollars right now and it's proven, really proven, really proven. Are you here somebody? You'll be waiting for tomorrow to go to the bank. If some of you will be distracted from today's prayer meeting. Some of you won't sleep tonight. If you know that you're going to the bank tomorrow and they'll give you one million USD cash. Ah! Hallelujah. One of our pastors, one time, Pastor Isaac also I'm talking about, said the first time he saw, many years ago, the first time they gave him 40,000 naira cash, he couldn't sleep. He said, put it under his mattress. He woke up under five minutes and check. I see him alone in the room. He locked his door, bolted it, bolted that one, shocker, put furniture, block, block, block everywhere. <laughs> check the city to see if it was really right. He would lie down, wake up, open, count it 40,000. He said, all night. He was, uh, he did all night, count it 40,000 after five, five minutes. Poverty, God caused, God punished poverty, his great grandfather, all his lineage. Literally, he couldn't sleep. 
<laughs> something happened some years ago, and we did one little transaction. So I was trying to, and they look at Nigerians. Eh? Hi, Nigerians. So they, they gave me the money in cash. I said, no, can you do it in this thing? And it was several millions. So I had a friend there. <laughs> I, I was wondering why he was just following me. I said, I said, no, we'll meet later. I said, no, sir, you don't understand. He said, I want to see million women. I want to see. <laughs> I said, you're welcome. Even me, this one I'm seeing for the first time. So we are, let all of us be seen. Okay. I want to talk Canada. You think I'm a Canada pastor now? You will see money this year. Oh. You will see good money this year. You will not suffer for money this year. In this area of money, you will sow on eagle's wings in the name of Jesus Christ. I know you're doing like you don't like it. I know you're looking very cool like this. But that's your, you, you, you will tie this year. You will tie this year. Because some of you looking cool like you don't like money. When it comes, nobody, at Chishuru, nobody will know. Don't eat it and be quiet. You will see money this year. You will see money. Stand on your covenant. If you spend, if you spend as much time with God as you're spending chasing men, eh, men will start chasing you. Telling you the truth. Don't invest energy in the wrong place. Are you here, somebody? So look at this now. You must engage some forces to live about this world system. Number one, the law of faith. You know, I'm just going to mention it today, but we'll keep expanding it. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. To access the benefits of redemption. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And is a reward of they that diligently seek him. God has put faith within the grasp of every human being. Every human being. For the, the person who does not know Christ. Their only access to understanding God's word. Is to understand what God's word says about salvation. Because they're outside. They're without the camp. But God has given Every human being, the ability to hear his word and understand concerning salvation. Now, when you come into Christ and you're saved, then the, the inheritance opens to you. Then you can hear and understand God's word about anything else. That's why God's word is a gene. It's a stumbling block. It's a mystery to people who are not genuinely born again. Genuinely born again. But then after you come into the kingdom, Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing. The same way faith comes to you to get saved. The same way faith comes to you to prosper you, to heal you, to keep you exempt, to deliver you, to protect you. It's all in God's word. It's all in God's word. As you listen to God's word with attention, with an open heart, asking for the help of the Holy Spirit, God will do a supernatural surgery in you. He will transfer in his faithfulness faith to your spirit. And then you find yourself able to believe that you can prosper regardless of what is going on around. Able to believe that even though a thousand may fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand side, none of these things will touch you. You enter into the fearless zone. Able to believe that God can lead you and will lead you and will guide you into your inheritance. And he will maintain your lot. He will maintain your lot. You see, the ability to believe God comes from staying with God. Just like if you hang around fried fish, you will smell like fish. If you hang around God's word, this thing will enter you. So please, gain momentum. Some of us should use this time of fasting to allow God to reignite our prayer life. See, you can't be too fanatical about prayer. You know, in those days they say, if you read the Bible too much, you go kolo. No, if you read it too much, you will, yes, the kolo is that you will, you will lose the identity of this world. You break the limits of the impossibility of this world and you fly in realms that people don't believe. I hear somebody. So I beg you, let's receive impartation this week, uh, this month. Let God reignite everything around about us. We were praying before, pray some more. Pray will not take, turn you mad. Pray in other tongues will turn you mad. It will switch you off the systems of this world. It will help you believe the unbelievable so you can receive the impossible. You can't think like the world and then get God's results. Peter had been toiling all night. The same place he had been toiling with all his knowledge of his craft. And Jesus, a carpenter who knew nothing about fishing, he said, throw out, cast out your net into the deep for a drought. You see, if, if, you don't, if, you don't, if you don't allow the word of God to renew your mind, where your miracles are, you will not go there because you explain it away. You explain it away. Are you here, somebody? 
Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Sama, you can't divorce faith from the knowledge of God's word. We talked about it before. The just shall be delivered by knowledge. My brother and my sister in Christ. Please. Don't, you can't, don't cede your spiritual growth to anybody else. You can't even do it. Don't cede your spiritual growth to anybody else. Don't be lazy about reading and studying and meditating. These are the things that transmit faith to your spirit. These are the things that make you able to believe what God said about you. It's real. You can be a believer, yet not have the capacity, yet not be fit enough to believe what God has said about you because you're not spending time in God's word. But you want to be a fit believer. Thank God for being physically fit. I'm already feeling it in my body now. I'm happy about it. I'm already feeling my size is dropping and I'm happy about it. But more than being physically fit, you need to be spiritually fit. The capacity to believe God's word and switch from the systems of this world. And start believing the unbelievable, naturally, humanly unbelievable, so that you can now receive what men say is impossible and live out your destiny as a sign of wonder in this life. God wants from this year, there's going to be a marked departure from the norm. God is going to separate believers from the world system by manifestations. I hear somebody. We're digging into this, so I hear somebody. So the law of faith, faith is a spiritual law. The same way you hear the word of God, receive faith to be saved, to get born again, the same way you hear God's word, any area of life you want to have results in, increase your rate of hearing there. Listen with attention. That's what hearing is. Listen with attention. That is what hearing is. Listening with attention. And the Holy Ghost will now start taking God's word and absorbing it into your spirit. Faith is the result. Glory to God. Deliver yourself from this untoward world. You don't have to live, you don't have to fear what the world fears. You know, in those days, we used to, there used to be one program, I think it was 700 Club that, that um, produced it. It was running for several years here in Joss and around the nation. Another life. Terry Davis. Huh? <laughs> but that another life, you forget about the drama, that phrase, it's another life. You don't have to live with poverty. Oh. You don't have to live with sickness. Oh. You can, your dreams can be fulfilled. God-given dreams. It, take, it will take the force of faith. Romans 8, 1. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus who walk after, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That part of it is important. Now, if you look at the word condemnation, it's not talking about being damned to hell. It's old English. It's just simply talking about things that trip you up in this world and don't allow you to access your inheritance. It's not talking about going to heaven or hell. So people get confused. They say, no, 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 there's no condemnation for us. And yes, there's no condemnation for anybody who is in Christ Jesus. You're in Christ Jesus, you're not going to hell. Because the sacrifice has been made and you have received it. But that, that word is not actually condemnation. It means to trip you up. When you are running and you are, or you have hindrances or you have things that don't allow you to do your best or access what you need to access. That's what it means. Enjoy preaching without my book. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. It's like the law of aeronautics, the law of lift and the law of gravity. Just be, when an aircraft is flying, it does not do away or it does not disannul. It does not cancel the law of gravity. It supersedes it. Gravity is existing. It's a law of God. He, we can't cancel it. So, just like that, the law of faith, the law of love, walking in the spirit, being led by the Holy Ghost, it will set you above the systems of this world. And the curse, the law of sin and death, the whole world lies in wickedness. 1 John 5, 19, you can't pray the curse away. You can only live above it. The curse will be finalized at the end of time when we have new heavens and new earth. At the end of the book, Revelation 22, and there was no curse. Until then, you can't pray the curse away, but you can live above it. Yes. By faith in what Christ has done. So don't walk after the flesh. This is the engagement. You cannot walk after the flesh and live blessed. Let me not lie to you. You cannot walk after the flesh. Flesh is a way of thinking that does not agree with God's word. You can't be saying, you can't be saying things are not working for me and expect the favor of God. You can't be breaking spiritual laws and be blessed. 
It's not talking about going to heaven or hell. Heaven or hell is settled by receiving Jesus as Savior and his sacrifice. But living in God's best in this life. See, angels and demons are messengers in this, in this world. Messengers of hell, demons. Messengers of, of the covenant, angels. And angels and demons are activated by words. So you can't be talking anyhow and blessed. Every day, I know get, I know get, I know get, 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 get. I know, you know the, you know the, this, I, you can, you can. Then you come and be rolling here and worshiping God. You, you, they are not, you come on, you enjoy it, but you go out and nothing. Because you're not giving, <laughs> angels are not going to act on those words. It's demons that act on those words. Are you here somebody? So you see, there's a training to walk in the spirit. Walking in the spirit is not levitating. It's learning how to think, believe, and speak in line with God's word. In every circumstance, whether you feel it like it, it, the word of God may be like sansa in your mouth, just be saying it. It doesn't work because it feels it works because it's God's word, it's a sword of the spirit. So, walk after the spirit. Be walking after the spirit is simply this understand how to operate by faith, walk in the love of God, run away from strife. Hi, anybody, leave it. I hear somebody. Jealousy, envy, holding people for your heart. Always remember that if Christ forgave you, there's nobody you have a right not to forgive. Because Christ forgave us all. Do you know what she did to me? I don't know. It must be very painful. But do you know what Christ took for you? And forgiving people is for your own benefit. And forgiveness is not a feeling. It's not a feeling. You may be feeling bad, but just be forgive. Just say, I receive. by faith, I forgive them. Even every time you see them, you feel like squeezing their necks. Just say, by faith, I forgive you. Eventually, your feeling will match. You can't, have, you can't afford that. It's too costly for you. Because the Bible says, if you engage in strife, you open the door for every evil work. Every evil work. Demons will come and do party and disco in your house. Because the door is wide open. So these are the things. Talking about walking the spirit, understanding spiritual laws. Are you here, somebody? How to function in the kingdom of God. That's why we have teaching and preaching. It's not just to come to church and be excited. You go back, study what you have heard, put it to practice in your life. And life begins to change for better. So I'll just round up here. The law of faith, the other one is the law of love, walking in the love of God. Faith works by love, Galatians 5, 6. And then you must be led by God's spirit. As many as are led by God's spirit, they are the sons of God. Of course, we're going to be, this is the direction for this year. So we're going to be talking about those things again and again and again. Reminding ourselves and building ourselves. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the place that God has for you this year is the place of the untouchables. A marked distinction between you and the world. Praise the name of the Lord. Wherever there were no results, results will come. Favorable results. Where there were good results before, they will escalate. Yes, they will. Are you here, somebody? Lift up your hands. Let's thank the Lord. Glory to God forevermore. Are you here, somebody? And I heard as we were praying, you know, God gives a deception-proof heart. That when you are praying concerning God's plan and yielding to his plan and asking God to just orchestrate things for your ear, he's, as he's preparing the ear, he's preparing you. So he's kitting you, he's equipping you. So you, you enter scenarios as you go along this year. And no matter how nice it looks, something you just... Ah! So Satan will not be able to cover up an up a, 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 how do I put it? A pit or a, or a trap with something that looks nice. Because as you pray, he prepares you for what he has prepared for you. So when you get to some critical junctions, your heart will not just fit it. You don't know, no, this is not for you. Some people look at it, why are you walking away from this? It looks like, he said, no, no, it's not. But he does not know that God has gone ahead of you. Because you know God doesn't live in the realm of time, right? So yesterday, today, and what? Future is now to him. So he will put that in your heart. When you get to that junction, you say, nah, this is not for you. And you just escape that thing. And the real thing will come to you. Blessed be God forevermore. You're blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You, are blessed. you see, one of the greatest things is that, that I'm trusting one of the greatest impartations we're going to get from this time of fasting, apart from when we're praying, making intercession for, when we're talking about ourselves, 
apart from praying for the country, the state, the city, the, the ministry, one of the greatest impartations you receive is, is, a, is, a, is a tool. The Holy Spirit will tool you, kit you spiritually. See this Isaiah 42, 16 is a gift. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them along paths that they have not known. Because God is going to move you into some zones that you're going to ask yourself, ah, I never thought I had this in me. I never even knew. It had never come to my understanding this was part of my inheritance. He's going to move you into some zones that may seem unfamiliar, but he has kitted you to enter it. Sometimes where your inheritance is, is not where you think it is. So let God lead you. I'll say it again. Though. Sometimes where you think your inheritance is, is not where it is. So let God lead you. God is so wise that sometimes, all the time he blinds the devil, but sometimes he will give his children temporary blindness because if he shows you something, you might go and spoil it. So it's when it's time, you open your eyes when you're ready. So this is your year. <laughs> this is the year you've been waiting for. So Isaiah 4, 2, 16 says, I'll bring the blind by whether they knew not. I'll lead them along paths that they have not known. I'll, I'll cause darkness to become light before them. Have you seen, I call them the four I wills of God. You know, I have a message I was supposed to teach her last year, but the Lord didn't, utterance didn't come for it. But there are certain things in the scripture, they are the I wills of God. When you see, and it's Isaiah, Isaiah says, I will cause, I will open rivers to them in high places. I will cause the desert to become a fruitful. So when God said, I will, that's my abilities behind this. It's not something you asked him to do. He has covenanted to do it for you. So when you find out what he said, I will do, you can rest. Are you somebody? I will cause darkness to become light before them. Crooked. I will cause the crooked to become straight. Kai. Rastofaramana Kaya. You walk along straight paths in 2024. You see these things around your life and destiny that looked crooked. The power of God is straightening them out. I say straightening them out. Issues of your health, issues of your family. You know. The Holy Ghost, as you stay in His presence, He will enlighten you. You just do some little thing in the spirit of in the spirit realm. Little things are the occasion for big things. Little hinges swing open big doors. So God will just give you one little instruction. It may look so inconsequential, but as you do it, you just see the siege of the devil is just dismantled. That's the wisdom of God. It, it, it may not come to your understanding. You may not be able to know and explain it, but God will just give you an instruction that will lead you to deliverance. So I say in the name of Jesus Christ, in this year, like never before, receive eyes to see. Receive ears to hear. Receive a wise understanding heart. The Bible said in Isaiah 50, he said, the Lord Jesus, that's a prophecy concerning the Lord Jesus. He said, the Lord has opened my ears to hear and I was not rebellious. No rebel in this house. No. He will open your ears to hear. Don't be rebellious. Because his plan for you is exceedingly, infinitely greater than the greatest plan you could ever devise for yourself. So I pray that more than anything, any, more than anything, the blessing of revelation, eyes to see, ears to hear. See, why people are further than others is what they have seen and heard and understood about God's word. That's why they're further than others. So if you see and hear understand that way, you also, boom, quantum leap. Some people are fighting battles they should not be fighting. Being offended at every little thing. But see, when revelation comes, you cool down because you're seeing far. So you don't get involved in petty fight. This one say, that one say, you leave that realm. You leave these weights behind. It's seeing, it's seeing, it's seeing. Why people are stingy, it's seeing. They have not seen that's why they're stingy. So the things that are made for your peace, they're all there. They're available. But eyes to see, ears to hear, a wise understanding heart. And this year, you're moving so far ahead. You'll surprise yourself. Far ahead. God just enlighten you. Just put some things in your heart. As you're doing, you just discover that weights are leaving your life. And you're just leaping forward. God will give you custom, tailor-made, personalized insight for your life. Tailor-made, custom-made.
so on communion table today I'll ask so many diverse miracles are tied to this seeing, hearing, understanding. Also tonight, receive strength to wait upon the Lord. I said, receive grace to wait upon the Lord. Receive grace to profitably wait upon the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Your encounters with the Lord, your time in the word and prayer will yield great fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. You hear a word behind you saying, this is the way of the Lord. Walk in it. Your days of being stranded and confused are over in the name of Jesus Christ. This year, your strength will not fail you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This year, you enjoy early victories in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This year, you walk in clarity of direction in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the clearer you see, the faster you go. You will know clarity you will know speed of accomplishment in the precious name of jesus and in 2024 you are preserved preserved from all harm your life is redeemed from destruction because the lord jesus was given for you your life is precious in god's eyes so your life is redeemed from destruction in 2024 in the name of the lord jesus christ this year, you'll be going out and coming in with testimonies. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has gone ahead of you. People, places and things have been aligned to serve you in the name of Jesus. This is how it is. In Jesus name. The lines have fallen upon you in pleasant places. You have a goodly heritage. Give the Lord a shout of praise somebody. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Glory.